My name is Dr. Michelle McMacken, and I'm super excited and honored to be partnering with Plant-Based News on this course. I'm gonna be covering what is type 2 diabetes, what are some of the causes of type 2 diabetes, and what should I be aware of as far as my medications, my blood sugar, uh, and other aspects of medical care if I have type 2 diabetes. And finally, what should I talk to my doctor about? What kind of blood test should I get? And what exactly should I be eating if I have type 2 diabetes? Welcome to this diabetes course. My name is Dr. Chen and I'm a UK physician with 14 years of experience. I've looked after many patients with type 2 diabetes and I used to tell my patients that they had a chronic, progressive, lifelong condition. That's why I'm so excited to be bringing you this course because much of what we understand about diabetes has been turned on its head in the last few years. We're here to present you with evidence-based information that is going to help you make changes to your life and bring back your health. I hope you enjoy. Diabetes is one of the most common chronic conditions in the world, and in fact, it's becoming more and more common. We know that now more than 380 million people in the world are living with diabetes. Some of the most common complications of this illness are heart disease, stroke, chronic kidney disease, which can lead to the need for dialysis, and eye disease, blindness, as well as damage to the nerves, particularly in the feet. I think a lot of people think that when they're told they have type 2 diabetes that they are committed to a lifetime of pills or even injections. And that's a really hard thing to hear. What I have experienced and what I love to tell my patients and what the science shows is that when you receive a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, that's actually an opportunity. That's an opportunity to start to work towards a healthier lifestyle and ideally a plant-based diet and that can actually not just reduce the need for medication, but in many cases it can put diabetes into remission. I have seen that myself in my patients and it's one of the most rewarding things about treating patients with type 2 diabetes is that you can almost predict that if they change their lifestyle and start eating a more plant-based diet, that their diabetes will improve and in some cases completely reverse. So type 2 diabetes is a condition in which our body cells don't respond properly to the insulin that our body makes. And this is a phenomenon called insulin resistance. So when our body's cells don't respond properly to insulin, particularly our body's muscle cells, what can happen is that glucose or sugar can build up in the bloodstream. And when this happens, this can lead over time to type 2 diabetes. Because we're talking about elevated sugar in the blood, a lot of people think that sugar itself in our diets is the only cause of type 2 diabetes. And while sugar is associated with the risk of type 2 diabetes, many people forget about other foods and nutrients that can also contribute to diabetes. And in fact, we know that probably the number one contributor in terms of foods to type 2 diabetes risk is actually processed meat. Foods like ham, bacon, cold cuts, these are foods for which one serving a day has been associated with between 37 and 51 percent higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So there's a very, very strong relationship. And also foods like red meat, uh, beef, uh, lamb, goat, pork, all of these foods are also very strongly tied to the risk of type 2 diabetes because they can affect the way that our body's cells respond to insulin. And so while it's very important to avoid unhealthy foods that contain added sugar, it's also really good to consider other foods that actually are just as, just as associated with the risk of type 2 diabetes. A 
A lot of people think that because type 2 diabetes runs in their family that they're automatically going to get type 2 diabetes themselves. But the reality is that although it does increase the risk to have a family history of type 2 diabetes, there's a lot that we can do as far as lifestyle choices to reduce that risk. So very large studies have shown that when people adopt a plant-based diet that's rich in whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and legumes like beans, they can actually reduce their risk of getting type 2 diabetes by up to between 34 and 60 percent. So that is a really dramatic risk uh, reduction that you can get from just adopting a healthier diet. A keto diet drastically cuts carbohydrates. And so it can definitely temporarily lower blood sugar in people who have type 2 diabetes. It also happens to be lower in calories than a lot of typical Western style diets. So it can also result in some weight loss, at least in the short run. But what we know from large long term uh, studies on keto diets is that actually the weight does not tend to stay off over time. It tends to come back and people with type 2 diabetes following keto style diets do not achieve better blood glucose control in the long run. So this is not really a great long-term approach. The really important thing to recognize about a keto diet is that it's not without risks. So we know from keto diet research that a keto diet has been associated with kidney stones, vitamin and mineral deficiencies, poor bone health, cardiac arrhythmias, and it's also been shown to raise the level of the unhealthy type of blood cholesterol called the LDL cholesterol, which is really a key risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And since people with type 2 diabetes are already at higher risk of cardiovascular disease, this is not looking at the big picture. So the big picture for people with type 2 diabetes is you want to do everything you can to improve not just your blood sugar control, but your long-term risks. And a keto diet is not going to help address that. We don't have long-term data showing that a keto diet lowers the risk of heart disease, whereas we have astounding, overwhelming evidence that a plant-based diet not just prevents heart disease, but it actually treats and it can completely reverse heart disease. So looking at the big picture, a plant-based diet is actually a fantastic choice for people with type 2 diabetes because it helps treat not just the type 2 diabetes, but also the long-term risks of diabetes. people truly understand the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes. Because the blood sugar is high, they understandably assume that carbohydrates and sugars are causing type 2 diabetes. That's a very limited view of what type 2 diabetes is about. At the root cause of type 2 diabetes is insulin receptors that don't work properly and therefore sugar in the blood cannot get inside of the cells starts to accumulate and cause damage in the organs. Simply avoiding carbohydrates and taking medications are actually great ways to manage your diabetes, but it actually doesn't get to the root cause of your type 2 diabetes. To get to the root cause of type 2 diabetes, we have to make the insulin receptors work again. And once the insulin receptors work properly again, you can eat carbohydrates without your blood sugar going high. That's our main goal in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. We want you to be able to enjoy foods that you used to enjoy without worrying. Many scientific studies dating back to 1920s have shown that sugar is not the cause of type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance. One of the most shocking studies that I came across when I first began researching and reading about the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes was a study done by Dr. Kempner in the 1950s. Dr. Kempner was a physician at Duke University and he invented what was known as the rice diet. Initially, he invented this diet to treat his patients with hypertension, but this diet proved to be useful in the reversal of 
end-stage kidney disease, end-stage heart disease, and also diabetes. In one of the studies, he put 100 diabetic patients on his rice diet. These patients ate only rice, fruits, fruit juice, and refined sugar. Now, if the myth that sugar causes diabetes was true, then these patients should have worsening diabetes at the end of the study. But what was shocking was that out of the 68 patients who needed insulin at the beginning of the study for their diabetes, 14 was able to come off their insulin altogether and 41 patients were able to reduce their insulin requirements. So if you believe the paradigm that carbohydrates and sugar causes type 2 diabetes, then this study makes no sense at all. Since then, other studies have also backed up what Dr. Kettner found, and we now know that the true root cause of type 2 diabetes is insulin receptors that don't work properly. First, let's look at what happens when we eat. When we eat food, our digestive tract breaks down the food into amino acids, simple sugars, and fatty acids. The simple sugars are absorbed into our bloodstream and travel to the cells where they're taken up with the help of insulin and the insulin receptors into the cells and inside the cell, sugar is then turned into ATP, which is energy. Here's a great video showing how insulin works at the molecular level. Here's a muscle cell. The yellow layer is the cell membrane and the purple structure is the insulin receptor. As you can see, the white molecules are the sugar in the blood trying to get inside the cell. When insulin binds to the receptor, a series of enzyme activation occurs, allowing a channel to appear in the cell membrane. And this is the door which lets sugar into our cells. What happens if there's no insulin? The sugar in the bloodstream cannot get inside a cell and the sugar level rises and rises. And this is what happens in type 1 diabetes. The pancreatic cells that produce insulin have been destroyed and there's no insulin around. In this course, we will focus on a second type of diabetes called type 2 diabetes, where there is initially plenty of insulin around, but the insulin doesn't work. The key is there, but the lock is gummed up. So sugar cannot get inside the cells. What causes the lock to gum up though? Fat, also known as intramyocellular lipid in our muscle cells or intrahepatocellular lipid in our liver cells. The fat buildup in these cells mean that the insulin receptor is gummed up and that channel which allows sugar to get in simply do not open. Therefore, it doesn't matter how much insulin there is in our blood, the sugar cannot get in. Initially, your body responds by producing more insulin and that may work temporarily, but over time, the pancreas can get tired of making so much insulin and also the insulin receptors get more and more jammed up and sugar starts to build up outside of the cell and you may be diagnosed with diabetes. So as you can see, the key to treating type 2 diabetes is not just to reduce the amount of sugar in your bloodstream. The key is to make those insulin receptors work again by getting rid of the fat inside of the cells. I like to use this analogy with my patients. Remember back to when you last went on vacation and you're packing your suitcase. The suitcase is already full of clothes, but you still have three pairs of shoes that you need to get in. No matter how much you shove and jam those shoes, they just won't get in or the suitcase simply won't close. So what do you need to do? You need to remove some of those clothes to make room for the shoes. And that's exactly what's going on inside of our cells. The fat is the clothes and it's jamming up the insulin receptors. So in order to get sugar into the cells, i.e. the shoes, we need to remove some clothes first. Some of the more popular diets 
will tell you to reduce carbohydrates in your diet. And that's like telling you to go on vacation without your shoes. We can function, but it's not the ideal scenario. Nobody wants to be on vacation without their shoes. And it's the same with our bodies. The body can react to diets in the short term, but it's not a preferred option. So the better option is to remove some of those clothes and make room for the shoes. And the equivalent in terms of type 2 diabetes is that the preferred option is to get rid of some of the fat buildup in our cells and make room so that the sugar molecules can start to get in efficiently. If you think about foods in three categories for type 2 diabetes and you use a sort of a traffic light system, so green light, yellow light, and red light foods for type 2 diabetes, the green light foods are foods such as whole grains, foods like oats, brown rice, barley, any type of whole grain. Uh, legumes, beans, lentils, chickpeas, uh, veggies of all types, diverse amount of uh, vegetables, and whole fruits. So fruits in their whole form rather than turned into juices. Uh, those are really the green light foods for type 2 diabetes and we should all be eating those in abundance. Uh, the yellow light foods for type 2 diabetes I would say are uh, the fattier plant foods. So nuts, seeds, avocados, um, and to some degree the vegetable oils. These are things that really should be limited and the red light foods are foods such as red meat, processed meat, refined grains or white flour foods, the added sugars in the diet, as well as really any type of very ultra processed or highly processed plant foods. When you first make the transition to a whole food plant-based diet, you may feel more hungry. And this is because whole plant foods tend to be lower in calorie density, which is an important consideration when you're trying to lose weight or improve your insulin sensitivity. Calorie density is basically the amount of calories per pound of food. Whole plant foods which are lower in calorie density can therefore make us feel fuller for longer and therefore aid in weight loss and reversal of insulin resistance. Research has shown that people can eat freely of foods that are 300 calories per pound or less and not gain weight. People can consume relatively large portions of foods that are between 300 and 800 calories per pound and still lose or maintain their weight depending on their individual activity levels and metabolism. The intake of foods with a calorie density of 800 to 1,800 calories per pound should be limited as these can contribute to weight gain and therefore interfere with efforts to lose weight. I would say the ideal amount of fruits and vegetables to eat per day is really actually unlimited. <laughs> but we should probably all be eating at least five servings of fruits and vegetables a day and really powerful research shows that we can get benefits from eating up to 10 servings a day when it comes to uh, preventing and treating type 2 diabetes as well as lowering the risk of heart disease and cancer. So really the more the merrier when it comes to fruits and vegetables, just eating them primarily in their whole form. Most studies of using plant-based diets to treat type 2 diabetes involve using very little if any oil in the diet. Having oil in the diet can actually for some people make it harder to achieve a healthy body weight which is really critical if you're trying to treat type 2 diabetes. So it's really a better idea to get your plant fats from whole plant foods such as small quantities of nuts or seeds or avocados uh, rather than from vegetable oils which are really extracted from the original plant. distinction I want to make is that not all carbohydrates are created equal. Complex carbohydrates are full of fiber and phytonutrients that our bodies need. However, refined carbohydrates, for example, refined sugar and white flour, 
can spike our blood sugar very rapidly and therefore cause our insulin to go up. A whole food plant-based diet focuses on whole unrefined carbohydrates, which are healthful foods that our bodies need for nutrients and can actually help to regulate our blood sugar control. However, it's a good idea to avoid refined carbohydrates like refined sugar and white flour, which may spike your blood sugar. There are three supplements that anyone following a whole food plant-based diet, but particularly for type 2 diabetes, uh, should consider. The first is B12, and this one's really the most important. Everyone who's eating a exclusively plant-based diet should really ensure that they're getting adequate B12, and this is ideally done through taking a supplement. The second is finding a plant source or algae-based source of DHA and EPA, and these you can think of as sort of the active forms of omega-3s. Research is mounting that people following plant-based diets should consider taking a direct source of DHA and EPA from, from a plant source like algae uh, because it might help long-term with overall cognitive health and other functions, but particularly if you have type 2 diabetes or other chronic conditions. So that's, a, that's the second supplement that um, would be recommended. And the third supplement to consider is vitamin D because many of us, including omnivores, um, don't get enough vitamin D from being exposed to sunlight, um, depending on where we live, and many people need to supplement with vitamin D. The average person needs about 0.8 grams for every kilogram of body weight when it comes to protein. But the reality is that most of us are getting a lot more protein than we need, whether we're eating an omnivorous diet or um, a more plant-based diet. So there's not uh, really a need to focus too much on the amount of protein that you're getting. If you're eating uh, a wide range of plant foods, particularly if you include legumes in your diet, um, then you're most likely meeting your, your protein targets. The most important thing when it comes to protein is really the source of your protein. So if you're getting your protein from plant sources, that's associated with a huge amount of health benefits in terms of uh, lowering your risk of cancer as well as heart disease and uh, in general uh, longevity and vitality, as opposed to getting your protein from animal sources, which tends to be very pro-inflammatory, increases the risk of cancer, as well as increases the risk of heart disease and other long-term complications. The wonderful thing about a plant-based diet is that it is so rich in fiber, in phytonutrients, and uh, antioxidants that it actually can start to reverse a lot of the inflammation and insulin resistance that may have built up over time. And it certainly goes a long way for preventing type 2 diabetes. So we know that when people eat diets rich in fiber, what we see is a few different things. First, the fiber in the foods tends to reduce the calorie density of those foods. So overall, you tend to be eating fewer calories over time, which is fantastic for most people, especially people who are at risk of type 2 diabetes. The fiber also helps curate a really healthy gut microbiota, gut bacterial pattern. And that, in turn, leads to incredible downstream effects. It actually leads to us making more healthy nutrients from those gut bacteria. They like to feed on fiber and make nutrients like short-chain fatty acids, which then help decrease insulin resistance. It also helps uh, our insulin directly function better and helps our cells burn fat so that the fat doesn't tend to build up as much in the muscle and liver cells. Um, phytonutrients and antioxidants in plant foods um, also tend to reduce inflammation in our cells. And this is simply a diet that helps most people maintain a healthier body weight over time, which really, really drives down the risk of type 2 diabetes. So everything put together, um, it's really pretty simple. The more whole or minimally processed plant foods in your diet, like veggies, whole fruits, beans, and whole grains, uh, the lower your risk of diabetes and the lower your risk of having insulin resistance, and it will help actually reverse insulin resistance in most cases. And the more animal-based or uh, highly processed foods in your diet, the more that will actually drive insulin resistance. I was trained 
at medical school to treat type 2 diabetes with medications. And it wasn't until much later when I did my own reading and research that I realized the true cause of type 2 diabetes and the evidence out there showing that type 2 diabetes can be reversed. That was extremely exciting for me as a physician because nothing is more rewarding than getting your patients off medications. However, not every doctor has seen the evidence out there and truly understand the cause of type 2 diabetes. And therefore, your doctor may not yet be subscribed to the idea of using a whole food plant-based diet to help you with your diabetes. That doesn't mean that they can't help and support you in your transition. And in fact, your blood sugar and blood pressure can drop so rapidly when you change your diet that it's important you engage your physician's help in monitoring you and making sure that the transition is safe, especially if you're on medications. The best way to engage your doctor is to show them that you're committed to your health. For example, you may go to them with specific goals of how much weight you want to lose or how much you want to reduce your HbA1c. If they don't sound keen or supportive of your wish to transition to a whole food plant-based diet, you could ask them questions like, I've heard that when I change my diet, my blood sugar or blood pressure can drop very rapidly. Can you give me some suggestions on how to monitor myself so that I stay safe? Maybe your doctor is not yet aware of the research showing that the true underlying cause of type 2 diabetes is the buildup of fat inside cells. And some doctors may be telling their patients with type 2 diabetes to eat a low carbohydrate, high protein or high fat diet. A whole food plant-based diet has just been endorsed by the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists as a first line dietary change in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. The truth is there have been so many studies showing the benefits of a whole food plant-based diet and we will provide you with five of the most important and landmark studies that you could perhaps share with your doctor to help them understand. If you're switching to a whole food plant-based diet, it may also be important to ask your doctor to monitor your B12, vitamin D, and iron levels. Some useful markers to ask from your doctor on your regular blood work include HbA1c, serum lipids, C-peptide, vitamin D, vitamin B12, iron and folate. I hope by now you have heard enough of the benefits of a whole food plant-based diet and want to give it a try. You may be feeling overwhelmed and that's completely understandable. You may be thinking that you will miss some of your favorite foods, but the truth is that our taste buds have been hijacked by these hyper palatable foods that have been designed by the food industry to make us eat more. We are hardwired to enjoy high fat, high sugar foods because it's an evolutionary mechanism that allowed us to survive when there were times of um, lack of food. However, we now have such an abundance of food, this mechanism is now obsolete. With time, your taste buds will change and you will start to enjoy the deliciousness of whole, whole foods that have been put on the earth by mother nature and intended, intended for us to eat. Adam Sud and I reversed type 2 diabetes with a low-fat whole food plant-based diet. My story starts in 2012. On August 21st of 2012 I had just survived a suicide attempt as a result of the end of a long struggle with substance abuse and I found myself in rehab where I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and a whole host of um, psychological conditions. 
My A1C was nearly 12 and my fasting blood glucose was 390. And I knew that I needed to radically change the way that I fed myself and moved my body. So I transitioned to a low fat, whole food, plant-based diet. It wasn't easy in the beginning, but I found reasons to want to get up and do it. I found reasons to want to practice self-care and self-love through food. And as a result of doing so, within three months, my blood glucose dropped from 390 to 80. And at month four, I went to go see my endocrinologist and we had done blood work and my A1C had fallen from nearly 12 to five. So within four months, I had completely reversed my type two diabetes, completely reversed my high blood pressure, my high cholesterol. Within 10 months, I had lost over 100 pounds, and within a year, I was off of every single medication I was prescribed when I got into rehab, including all my psych meds. I've lost 200 pounds as of now, and I absolutely have fallen in love with the process of owning my health and well-being with a low-fat, whole-food, plant-based diet. 